There was a time when most people in America were watching the same TV shows on the same big three networks, ABC, CBS, and NBC. A high Nielsen rating meant a show had a large audience, which directly influenced how much businesses were willing to pay for an ad spot. Limited placement opportunities meant that advertising strategies tended to be geared toward mass appeal. Ads were less targeted and more general, aiming to resonate with a wide demographic. Now today, we don't just have three channels, obviously. The average person in the United States spends roughly six to seven hours online and visits over 100 pages, web pages, I should say, in a single day. As a result, advertisers also have more options as to when and where they choose to reach us. So today we're going to talk about three things. One, how you're being targeted. Two, advertisers' abilities to personalize what you see and when you see it. And three, how in the age of AI, human choices are more important than ever. So now, as most of you know, uh, anyone who has a cell phone, everything you do online is tracked. Your searches, your likes, shares, and even how quickly you scroll past a video on TikTok, or if you want to keep watching it over and over again. Companies like Meta and Google use this data to build a profile on you, grouping you with others who act similarly online. And then they sell me targeted ad space on your feed. For example, the more likely you are to watch Miami Heat highlight reels, the more likely it is you'll see an ad for their fan merchandise as you keep scrolling through. As an advertiser, Meta, Google, TikTok, and others give me hundreds of data points about you to choose from when combining, uh, when combining a profile for someone we want to target. So if I wanted to, I could uh, build a profile of someone who was an early morning online shopper, who lived in the zip code 33496, who was married but didn't have kids, loved nature documentaries, and followed Selena Gomez on Instagram. I could build that person if I wanted to and choose to advertise to them if a company hired our firm to do so. They're trusting us to know what data points to combine and package to build an audience they want to acquire as customers. After that, our job as an agency is to build the ads and the messaging to try and influence that person into a purchase decision. So at a basic level, this is what it looks like. On the left side, you have your uh, target criteria and a list of audience profiles that we choose to combine. After we do that, we'll spend a few weeks creating one or two ads to see which variation performs best. This is called A-B testing, typically. I hope the one on the left wins. Um, at our firm, we've recently come up with a way to take these des handmade designs and use generative AI to scale them up in a single day to make hundreds of variations, tweaking everything from the background colors and button shapes to the people we use in the images. The goal is to allow ourselves the ability to test at scale while maintaining human creative quality. Then we quickly pinpoint what captures the attention of a very specific audience persona. If we can do this form of dynamic content optimization, it reduces the number of impressions needed to trigger that action we want you to take, thereby lowering the amount of money we have to spend to influence you into making a purchase. Now, another widely used concept in advertising is called retargeting, such as showing your ads based on recent website visits. For example, I have a website containing some of my music, and we use that site to sell song licenses, tickets to shows, merchandise, and more. So if you come to the site and you listen to a few songs, took a look, take a look at some show dates, but you don't buy anything, a few minutes later, you'll probably see an Instagram ad from me uh, advertising those same things you were looking at. So we've got a few things here. The ability to profile you, the ability to make hundreds of ads personalized to you specifically within just a few hours, and the ability to track your decision making based on your response to those ads. Now there was a digital consumer trends index report that came out in 2022, which said that 67% of consumers already feel uneasy when they see an ad that seems to know too much about them. And additionally, there was another study done in Australia in 2019, I think, where 80% of those surveyed were asked about filter bubbles, and they felt that per they were being personalized, they were getting personalized content that was limiting their exposure to diverse viewpoints. Now, marketing budget at a company is always a hard thing to sell. 
And so as an agency, we want to push the boundaries of personalization to acquire customers at a lower and lower cost. Yet, with this ability to influence you and more specifically your choices at such a granular level, it also compels us to consider the impact of our choices and how using new technology like this may have an impact on societal norms and more importantly, your individual autonomy. So there's a philosophical divide that I've had with myself when it comes to using these tools that our firm has developed. It mirrors kind of a broader debate in economics. On one side, there's the efficiency-driven approach, rooted in the capitalist sort of concepts that were built by Adam Smith and Milton Friedman. It's that this primary social responsibility of businesses is to increase its profits while still adhering to basic societal and ethical norms. But what are norms now with this technology? What's normal about the ability to learn so much about you and have it take marginal labor to influence you at such a hyper-targeted level? Friedman's ideas aren't disregarding the social implications of what the pursuit of profit does, but rather that we should trust that when markets are functioning properly, they can lead to more sustainable and just societies as consumers express their personal choices through transactions. But again, as this technology advances, how do you define consumer choice? On the opposite end of Friedman is the path of social responsibility informed by Kantian ethics who throughout his work emphasizes moral duties over profit motives and that through the categorical imperative, business owners following this principle of morality might avoid business practices which could undermine their trust in the market from consumers. Even if it means sacrificing some short-term profit, it would pay off in the long run. So there's a clear dichotomy here between the two ideas, profit maximization, saying yes to everything that AI has to offer, or acknowledging that it might be too good to be true and that we should probably slow down a little bit because there may be negative societal consequences which we can't see yet. So just to wrap it up, I hope consumers become acutely aware that over the next few years, whether you see it or not, AI is going to be more integrated in everything you do. Firms like mine will have even better methods of subtly influencing you in your everyday life to have you make certain decisions and choices and at the current pace with consumer protection laws, privacy legislation, taking how long they take, it's going to take a while for all those things to catch up to protect you. Now, for business leaders, both current and future, we're stepping into a world brimming with possibility, cutting-edge technology, loose legislation, and complex societal and ethical challenges. Often, the path of, least, the path of efficiency, at least in this example, may be tempting as systems get smarter and privacy laws will flail. However, it's your responsibility to weigh the broader implications of your choices to use this technology, and more importantly, to consider the edge cases and down funnel effects that they will have. So as AI becomes ever present in our everyday interactions, we are faced with two pivotal choices. The first for consumers, do we passively consume or consciously engage? And the second for business leaders, do we exploit this technology for short-term gain while we still don't understand it, or do we invest in long-term trust? Thank you.